Section three of the Dhammapada. Chapters nine through fourteen. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to find out how to volunteer, please contact LibriVox.org. The Dhammapada. Translated by F. Max Mueller. Section three. Chapter nine. Evil. If a man would hasten towards the good, he should keep his thought away from evil. If a man does what is good slothfully, his mind delights in evil. If a man commits a sin, let him not do it again. Let him not delight in sin. Pain is the outcome of evil. If a man does what is good, let him do it again. Let him delight in it. Happiness is the outcome of good. Even an evildoer sees happiness as long as his evil deed has not ripened. But when his evil deed has ripened, then does the evildoer see evil. Even a good man sees evil days as long as his good deed has not ripened. But when his good deed has ripened, then does the good man see happy days. Let no man think lightly of evil, saying in his heart, It will not come nigh unto me. Even by the falling of water drops, a water pot is filled. The fool becomes full of evil, even if he gather it little by little. Let no man think lightly of good, saying in his heart, It will not come nigh unto me. Even by the following of water drops, a water pot is filled. The wise man becomes full of good, even if he gather it little by little. Let a man avoid evil deeds, as a merchant, if he has a few companions and carries much wealth, avoids a dangerous road. As a man who loves life avoids poison. He who has no wound on his hand may touch poison with his hand. Poison does not affect one who has no wound. Nor is there evil for one who does not commit evil. If a man offend a harmless, pure, and innocent person, the evil falls back upon that fool, like light dust thrown up against the wind. Some people are born again, Evil doers go to hell. Righteous people go to heaven. Those who are free from all worldly desires attain nirvana. Not in the sky, not in the midst of the sea, not if we enter into the clefts of the mountains, is there known a spot in the whole world where death could not overcome the mortal. Chapter 10 Punishment. All men tremble at punishment. All men fear death. Remember that you are like unto them, and do not kill nor cause slaughter. All men tremble at punishment. All men love life. Remember that thou art like unto them, and do not kill nor cause slaughter. He who seeking his own happiness punishes or kills beings who also long for happiness, will not find happiness after death. He who seeking his own happiness does not punish or kill beings who also long for happiness, will find happiness after death. Do not speak harshly to anybody. Those who are spoken to will answer thee in the same way. Angry speech is painful. Blows for blows will touch thee. If, like a shattered metal plate, thou utter not, then thou hast reached nirvana. Contention is not known to thee. As a cowherd with his staff drives his cows into the stable, so do age and death drive the life of men. A fool does not know when he commits his evil deeds, but the wicked man burns by his own deeds as if burnt by fire. 
he who inflicts pain on innocent and harmless persons will soon come to one of these ten states. He will have cruel suffering, loss, injury of the body, heavy affliction, or loss of mind, or misfortune coming from the king, or a fearful accusation, or loss of relations, or destruction of treasures, or lightning fire will burn his houses. And when his body is destroyed, the fool will go to hell. Not nakedness, not plaited hair, not dirt, not fasting, or lying on the earth, not rubbing with dust, not sitting motionless, can purify a mortal who has not overcome desires. He who, though dressed in fine apparel, exercises tranquility, is quiet, subdued, restrained, chaste, and has ceased to find fault with all other beings, he indeed is Brahmana, an aesthetic, Sramana, a friar, Bhiksu. Is there in this world any man so restrained by humility that he does not mind reproof? as a well-trained horse, the whip. Like a well-trained horse, when touched by the whip, be ye active and lively, and by faith, by virtue, by energy, by meditation, by discernment of the law, you will overcome this great pain of reproof, perfect in knowledge and in behavior, and never forgetful. Well-makers lead the water wherever they like, Fletchers bend the arrow. Carpenters bend a log of wood. Good people fashion themselves. Chapter 11 Old Age How is there laughter? How is there joy? As this world is always burning. Why do you not seek a light, ye who are surrounded by darkness? Look at this dressed-up lump, covered with wounds, joined together, sickly, full of many thoughts, which has no strength, no hold. This body is wasted, full of sickness and frail. This heap of corruption breaks to pieces. Life indeed ends in death. Those white bones, like gourds thrown away in the autumn, what pleasure is there in looking at them? After a stronghold has been made of the bones, it is covered with flesh and blood, and there dwell in it old age and death, pride and deceit. The brilliant chariots of kings are destroyed. The body also approaches destruction, but the virtue of good people never approaches destruction. Thus do the good say to the good. A man who has learnt little grows old like an ox. His flesh grows, but his knowledge does not grow. Looking for the maker of this tabernacle, I shall have to run through a course of many births, so long as I do not find him. And painful is birth again and again. But now, maker of the tabernacle, thou hast been seen. Thou shalt not make up this tabernacle again. All thy rafters are broken, thy ridgepole is sundered. The mind, approaching the eternal, Visankara, Nirvana, has attained to the extinction of all desires. Men, who have not observed proper discipline, and have not gained treasure in their youth, perish like old herons in a lake without fish. Men who have not observed proper discipline, and have not gained treasure in their youth, lie like broken bows, sighing after the past. Chapter 12 Self If a man hold himself dear, let him watch himself carefully. 
during one at least out of the three watches, a wise man should be watchful. Let each man direct himself first to what is proper. Then let him teach others. Thus a wise man will not suffer. If a man make himself as he teaches others to be, then, being himself well subdued, he may subdue others. One's own self is indeed difficult to subdue. Self is the lord of self. Who else could be the lord? With self well subdued, a man finds a lord such as few can find. The evil done by oneself, self-begotten, self-bred, crushes the foolish, as a diamond breaks a precious stone. He whose wickedness is very great brings himself down to that state where his enemy wishes him to be, as a creeper does with the tree which it surrounds. Bad deeds and deeds hurtful to ourselves are easy to do. What is beneficial and good, that is very difficult to do. The foolish man who scorns the rule of the venerable Arahat, of the elect Arya, of the virtuous, and follows false doctrine, he bears fruit to his own destruction, like the fruits of the Kathaka reed. By oneself the evil is done, by oneself one suffers, by oneself evil is left undone, by oneself one is purified. Purity and impurity belong to oneself. No one can purify another. Let no one forget his own duty for the sake of another's, however great. Let a man, after he has discerned his own duty, be always attentive to his duty. Chapter 13 The World do not follow the evil law. Do not live on in thoughtlessness. Do not follow false doctrine. Be not a friend of the world. Rouse thyself. Do not be idle. Follow the law of virtue. The virtuous rests in bliss in this world and in the next. Follow the law of virtue. Do not follow that of sin. The virtuous rests in bliss in this world and in the next. Look upon the world as a bubble. Look upon it as a mirage. The king of death does not see him who thus looks down upon the world. Come, look at this glittering world, like unto a royal chariot. The foolish are immersed in it, but the wise do not touch it. He who formerly was reckless, and afterwards became sober, brightens up this world, like the moon when freed from the clouds. He whose evil deeds are covered by good deeds, brightens up this world, like the moon when freed from the clouds. This world is dark, few only can see here, a few only go to heaven, like birds escaped from the net. The swans go on the path of the sun. They go through the ether by means of their miraculous power. The wise are led out of this world when they have conquered Mara and his train. If a man has transgressed one law and speaks lies and scoffs at another world, there is no evil he will not do. The uncharitable do not go to the world of the gods. Fools only do not praise liberality. A wise man rejoices in liberality, and through it becomes blessed in the other world. Better than sovereignty over the earth, better than going to heaven, better than lordship over all worlds, is the reward of the first step in holiness. 
Chapter 14 The Buddha The Awakened He whose conquest is not conquered again, into whose conquest no one in this world enters, by what track can you lead him, the awakened, the omniscient, the trackless? He whom no desire with its snares and poisons can lead astray, by what track can you lead him, the awakened, the omniscient, the trackless? Even the gods envy those who are awakened and not forgetful, who are given to meditation, who are wise, and who delight in the repose of retirement from the world. Difficult to obtain in the conception of men, difficult is the life of mortals, difficult is the hearing of the true law, difficult is the birth of the awakened, the attainment of Buddhahood. Not to commit any sin, to do good, and to purify one's mind, that is the teaching of all the awakened. The awakened call patience the highest penance, long-suffering the highest nirvana. For he is not an anchorite, pravagita, who strikes others. He is not an ascetic, sramana, who insults others. Not to blame, not to strike, to live restrained under the law, to be moderate in eating, to sleep and sit alone, and to dwell on the highest thoughts. This is the teaching of the awakened. There is no satisfying lusts, even by a shower of gold pieces. He who knows that lusts have a short taste and cause pain, he is wise. Even in heavenly pleasures he finds no satisfaction. The disciple who is fully awakened delights only in the destruction of all desires. Men, driven by fear, go to many a refuge, to mountains and forests, to groves and sacred trees. But that is not a safe refuge. That is not the best refuge. A man is not delivered from all pains after having gone to that refuge. He who takes refuge with Buddha, the law, and the church, he who with clear understanding sees the four holy truths, viz. pain, the origin of pain, the destruction of pain, and the eightfold holy way, that leads to the quieting of pain. That is the safe refuge, that is the best refuge. Having gone to that refuge, a man is delivered from all pain. A supernatural person, a Buddha, is not easily found. He is not born everywhere. Wherever such a sage is born, that race prospers. Happy is the arising of the awakened. Happy is the teaching of the true law. Happy is peace in the church. Happy is the devotion of those who are at peace. He who pays homage to those who deserve homage, whether the awakened Buddha or their disciples, those who have overcome the host of evils and crossed the flood of sorrow, he who pays homage to such as have found deliverance and know no fear, his merit can never be measured by anybody. End section 3 This recording is in the public domain. This recording is in the public domain. This recording is in the public domain.